And to a lot of people's surprise, Tier Elements is one of the highest rep. Oh, well, wait, it is the highest rep is in a deck in top 64. <laughs> Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more. I'm going to be looking at your day one breakdown, your top 64 for all the information that we have as of the filming of this video. So we're going to start off with your top day one breakdown of everybody in the room. Your most represented deck in the entirety of the tournament was actually Unchained. This was actually pretty much to be expected. A lot of people, including myself, have been looking around and going, hey, you know, Unchained is probably the best deck in the room, you know, in terms of the things that the deck does. It, it's just kind of insane, actually. And I mean, there are certain choke points that the deck can feel a lot more fragile than others. I, I, I will say that. But you do have to consider that the deck's explosiveness is, is crazy. And then a 10% representation directly off of that with purely. So honestly, the, the two decks that I honestly thought were the best two decks in the room kind of doing their thing. Now, at this stage in the overall representation, 9% of people, it was 25... 40, 25, it's, it's a very large number of people, I believe, were playing this YCS. 9% of the field overall were actually playing tier elements. All right, like this is actually kind of crazy to think about out here because so many people were like, oh, you know, like tier, it's just going to be tossed over into a pile. No, now that Arise Heart has exited the room right now, what we're seeing is this explosion of tier, and trust me, tier elements has a crazy fan base right now. All right, like the deck, it, it, it feels kind of crazy once it starts going, but you have to get to the point of, you know, starting it. And that's kind of where, you know, a well-timed shifter can kind of just wrench the deck, and a lot to really consider there as well. No. We also had a 7% Flanderies representation. That's a lot of birds. All right, we've talked about how birds has been this massive deck that is stuck around in the meta right now that has done a fantastic job at needing to do what it does, all right? Um, N-Pen is a card that Duelist still refuse to play around. I, I still don't get that, by the way. I don't know why Duelist just don't want to play around N-Pen anymore, but... You know what? You can lose to the Harpy's Featherstorm. You can lose to the Random Dimension shit. You can lose to all of this crazy curveball stuff that has continued to kind of do its thing out here as well. Now, I see we also had a 6% Labyrinth representation. That's a lot higher than I kind of thought, but, you know, as the meta kind of falls back here, players are going to kind of open back up and, you know, try to eradicate or some people. They want to they wanna get their foot in the door on the craziest level of things that they can. And we also had a 5% branded. Now, this is also going to include your branded Chimera variants, you know, all the little fun piles that we've kind of seen doing their thing. And then the rest of the field, keep in mind, that's 48% of your meta in, what is that, six decks? So that means that other people don't have as much faith in these, or, you know, it's also going to probably include your Rika Sun Avalon variant, your Mathematic, all of the other piles that have been sticking around here and kind of doing your thing. I think the early numbers really do say something here in terms of overall representation. But wait, this is where things get very interesting. Your top 64 tier elements is 16% of your playing field. Do you know how crazy that is? You're, you're coming in here, you're looking at these previous numbers here, and you are like, all right, cool, I, I didn't expect to see tier. But once again, I, I think this does kind of prove that, you know, if shifter's not sticking around here, the disruptions aren't doing their job right now, then you're going to see a lot of stuff like this continue just to erupt out of nowhere. So am I surprised? A little bit, honestly. I didn't expect to see Tyr being on top of the food chain. Honestly, it's it's very surprising. Now, we do have Unchained coming in at 14%, and I do believe that Jesse Cotton also topped this YCS as well. So that's going to be something that a lot of people are going to be happy about. You're going to get the chance to see you know, what people are going to be like, ooh, the next round of innovations. You know, 14% 4, might not look like a lot, but, but it is. I see that we also have 13% Dragon Link in here as well. Where did that number come from? That wasn't even on the, the beginning day sheet out here. 
in terms of things. But then you kind of look around and you're like, wow, okay. Dragon Link really pulling it together out here. I got to clap for it. 13% representation is pretty impressive. Branded kind of bringing it up here on the back end as well, which, you know, 8% is what it is. Actually, the fact that Branded and Flanderies both look like they have an equal representation in terms of the event here for Top 64 is kind of impressive. And I also see that we have, now th this is the kicker for a lot of people, that aren't ready for this. Mana Diem had a 5% representation, and I've read a lot of comments today from people really just dogging on Mana Diem. A lot of people are like, no, I, I do not want to believe that Mana Diem is a top contender right now. It's like, yeah, I understand Age of Overlord is just a couple weeks away, and you know, you're ready for the next hot piece of innovation out here, sure, but you know, the combo variant from what we've seen on the live streams have been nuts. Now, there is a 36% other here. Uh, I do believe that Minkanko was part of that. And I also believe that they were talking about on stream. Uh, don't quote me on this. I believe the virtual world player also made their way in. And unfortunately, Lithium looks like they bubbled at this point. Uh, they actually ended up losing, I think, what was it, round 10. So Monarchs... Uh, reading that report, seeing that, you know, the format feels like it's slowed down a little bit, um, I, you are at the point where players don't really know what they're doing right now, and that's why you're seeing this top cut kind of sculpting itself into what looks like one of the best, you know, genuine changes you can have out here. Also, I mean, tier kind of feels like the hard counter to unchain. Oh, you blew up my tier monster? Okay, well, I'll go ahead and, you know, do some sort of devastating fusion effect now, because thank you for triggering this. And once again, I, I think your meta, at least in the top 64, feels pretty open. If you were wanting some more info like top 32 or top 16 as of putting this together that hasn't been posted yet, um, and actually we're heading on into the top 16 feature right now of Dragon Link versus Flandry. So anything honestly could happen out of this event right now. You could honestly, with, with the amount of tier elements that are present, I wouldn't be surprised to see tier take it down, but you know, you also have Rika Sun Avalon sitting in the top cut as well. And we've seen how much Europe loves that deck. At this at this point in time, I mean, you shouldn't be surprised seeing that Europe has been this dominating force with Rika Sun Avalon. It, it's, uh, the joke was like, yeah, plants can't really do all that great in, you know, America or Canada or whatever. You, you come on over here to a European event and they are just, they are crazy for plants. And I, that's once again, you can see those regional differences out here where these decks can really get the chance to shine. And that, that is a very big part of the game that no one really explores or talks about is, you know, every region can be a completely different top deck. All right. And I mean, there are parts of when we look at regional data out here, same thing as well. You know, a deck can be successful in one region. You look around, you skip over here to something else. And all of a sudden, you know, that's not a top contender. But right now, I mean, you shouldn't be surprised if you see Tyr, you see Rika, you see Dragon Link. The meta pre-Age of Overlord is a very open landscape. It, it's honestly, it looks really good on paper. Blowing Kashtira out of the face of the planet was by far probably one of the best decisions that Konami could have actually done at this point in time. But I do want to ask, who are you rooting for to win this YCS? And of course, tomorrow morning, I'll be back here. We'll go through all of the deck profiles and things that we've seen so far. We'll have the rest of the breakdowns because, you know, you got to post that eventually. Also, I, I really, I do want to say that, like, not posting the top 32 in these these extended breakdowns like we get on the TCG side, I do enjoy Europe's coverage of the live streams a little bit better, but I will give the TCG, um, for the way that our events have been running over here, the extended breakdowns and actually having the information on the blog available right away does tend to seem a little bit more better. So each side does tend to have things, though, that are a little bit better, but I'll clap for it. Europe's presentation this event has been absolutely gorgeous. Um, I know a lot of people definitely like, oh, you know, Europe is the better live stream events. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just I really wish that the info was a little bit more available so we could talk about this. You ready for Tier to win? Yeah, I can only imagine how upset this community is going to be. So please leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back here in the day, guys. Peace out.
patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.